Hi, my name is Avatar Man. Hi, my name is Surfer Guy. Do you like my sweet and smiley yellow boxes? <laughs> we are here to present information on Healthy People 2020. I hope you admire our masterpiece. Enjoy. Here are seven leading health indicators that are used to measure the health of the nation over the next 10 years. The first indicator is physical activity. There are lots of benefits when exercising, including improved cardiovascular and respiratory functioning, reduced coronary artery disease, and increased quality of life. Hey surfer dude with the yellow boxers, what do you know about physical activity? Well, Mr. Avatar Guy, studies have shown that exercise can have a direct effect on preventing heart disease, cancer, and other causes of premature death. In fact, Healthy People 2020 are trying to pass a bill stating children will be required to have recess time for 30 minutes a day from kindergarten through high school. Did you know that the average workout routine should be at least 3 hours a week for adults? The exercise program can consist of walking fast, riding a bike, or pushing your lawnmower. Hey class, what are some of the ways you incorporate physical activity in your weekly routine? The second health indicator is obesity. In the United States, about 300,000 Americans die each year from obesity-related illnesses. <gasps> well, that's just completely disgusting. I mean, how does that happen? Well, Avatar Man, the number of obesity among children has more than doubled over the last 30 years. This is the outcome of parents taking the easy way out, or the most easy choice. Which is fast food like McDonald's. That's funny you said that. I have an interesting video on McDonald's food. I hope you don't vomit while watching this video class. A certain McDonald's hamburger. It's four years old. I have fries with it and it's aging better than me. No preservatives. Nothing's been done to it. I carry it around in a lunchbox. This is just a McDonald's Happy Meal hamburger. This is going on four years old. Now I want you to look at it and look for mold, it crumbles, the bun, the bun is falling apart, that's the worst thing happening to this. The, the cheese is hard, the little hamburger bun is shrunken up, but there's no mold, no mildew, no visible signs of rot, age, breakdown, or anything. Do you want fries with that? Okay, so you would want fries with that if you oh, were wanting to eat I would eat fries that. over a burger. Okay. I do like fries. Oh, those look like they're brand new. Hold them in your hand, rub your fingers around. Salty, greasy, oily to the touch. Four-year-old oh french fries. What vegetable is that made out of? A potato. Okay. Exhibit A. A potato. Okay. This is a potato, real food potato. So I took a potato and I sliced it open just to see, you know, what real food does when it deteriorates. Yeah. These are only three months old. Because wow. every time I go through airport security, airport security takes them from me because it's got mold all over it and mildew. This is what a real potato looks like sliced open three months old. This is a McDonald's french fry that's four years old. That's absolutely crazy. What is this doing inside our body? Why are our kids eating this stuff? Why are we obese? There's no breakdown. I think once it gets in your thighs, there's no breakdown. It doesn't go anywhere. Real food breaks down. This can't be real food. It can't be. <coughs> That was the most vile video I have ever seen in my life. How can a four-year-old hamburger not have any mold on it? It must be all of the preservatives inside of the hamburger. Well, Avatar Man, the only way to lower the obesity rate is to start exercising and making healthy eating choices instead of eating fast food. Parents need to get their children off video games and join a sports activity such as baseball, football, or soccer. Yes, surfer guy. I totally agree. The next health indicator is tobacco use. Tobacco use kills about 440,000 people a year in America. <gasps> hey Avatar guy, how do we lower the number of deaths from tobacco use? Well yellow boxers guy, that's a great question and I have a great answer. Healthy People 2020 are trying to have dentists give patients information on gum disease and mouth cancer at every checkup whether you are a smoker or not. That's a great idea. Also, 
schools are increasing fines in non-smoking areas, as well as state officials increasing fines for those who buy tobacco products for children. I think that's a great way to deter people from smoking by putting a hole in their pocket. I can bet that if you take Americans' money by raising fines, you will see a rapid change. Another good idea is to put up more visuals of what tobacco use really does to the body, like billboards and commercials. Yes, that is also a great idea. Well, the next health indicator is responsible sexual behaviors. Just like we tell kids not to try drugs, we should also tell them not to try sexual intercourse. We need to keep our youth at a higher behavior standard, so they have higher expectations throughout life. If a teen has sex, we should encourage them to return to an abstinence state, because it is the only 100% safe method to protect a child's sexual health. I agree. Other ways to encourage responsible sexual behavior is to allow nurses to hand out condoms in schools and to show more visuals on the effects of sexually transmitted diseases and what they do to your body. The next health indicator is mental health. Some mental illnesses include depression, mood disorders, personality disorders, and anxiety disorders. Mental health deeply affects one's quality of life, and no one should have to live with the hopelessness and despair that often comes along with mental disorders. Hey Blue Balls Man, what are some ways we can manage mental health issues? Well, many times suicide is the cause of a mental illness that was not diagnosed. We need to increase the depression screening for children 12 to 19 years of age and also increase the proportion of adults with mental illnesses to get correct treatment. I believe this will have a huge impact on people suffering from mental illness. On to the next health indicator, which is environmental equality. We need to improve the nation's air quality by using cleaner alternative tools, such as hybrid vehicles that use less fuels to lower the pollution rate. According to the Green Car Club, hybrids reduce health threatening tailpipe emissions by 90% and evaporative emissions to almost zero. That is a lot of percent. That could make a whole hell of a lot of a difference for the world, Avatar Man. I know it could, Surf Man. I know it could. Also, public transportation highly reduces the amount of pollution in the air. Public transportation in the United States saves approximately 1.5 million tons of carbon dioxide annually. If we could only increase the number of Americans to use public transportation, then the world would be a much cleaner place. Bingo. That makes me happy. By the way, I have a video to show all of you. It is about public transportation. Enjoy. I'm scared of public transportation. I was on a bus that was held hostage. The shit was scary, son. It was scary. Dave Chappelle? Whoops, that was the wrong video. Here is the video I was looking for. Enjoy. Max, are you in here? Turn off the lights! Sorry! I'm saving energy, helping the environment. Where are you? Make a left! No, 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 the other left! My pizza box collection! Ow. Hey, I don't have a cat! Watch out! The Max, there's an easier way to help the environment, and it won't be such a pain in the neck. Take public transportation. Go green. Go public. A message from the public transportation systems across the country. Indeed. That was an enlightening video. The next health indicator is access to health care. We should increase the amount of people that are eligible for health insurance. The National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance supports health care policies that will provide health care to every man, woman, and child, regardless of health status or pre-existing conditions. President Obama signed legislation on March 23, 2010, to overhaul the nation's health care system and assure access to medical insurance for tens of millions of Americans. I actually have my final video for you to watch. Enjoy. Today's question, what is health care reform and why do we need it? The simple answer is, well, there is no simple answer. Health care reform is a hot topic these days. The President, Congress, and people like you are talking about it. 
After all, it affects everyone. So what's wrong with the healthcare system? For starters, lots of people are left out. Nearly 46 million Americans don't have any form of health insurance at all. So if they get sick or injured, they have to pay cash or go without treatment. It's a tough choice to make. And of every dollar Americans spend on health care, up to 30 cents is wasted on things like unneeded tests, emergency room visits that aren't emergencies, and care that just doesn't improve health. Americans spend more on health care than any other nation, but it doesn't make us healthier and we don't live longer. We take care of illness, but we do little to promote health. So what do we do about it? Government is looking at lots of ideas. These ideas might be used by themselves or together in various combinations. One thought is to guarantee that anyone can get insurance regardless of their health. Even people who already have pre-existing conditions could get coverage. Some proposals go a step further and require everyone to have coverage. Why? So people don't wait until they're sick to apply. If that happens, only the sick would buy coverage, which raises costs for everyone and defeats the whole purpose of health insurance. Remember, health insurance works because lots of us pay into the system, allowing costs to be spread out, so the healthy help pay for the sick. Another idea is to start all over and let government administer health care like it does the post office and the education system. Or, let people choose between private plans and a government plan like the one government employees have today. Then there's the employer issue. Should we require employers to offer health insurance to their workers? Should we keep things the way they are? Or should we create another way for everyone to get coverage on their own? Maybe a health insurance exchange, a place to help people compare different health plans, buy coverage, and simplify enrollment. Whatever we do to reform health care, the government will need to help some people pay for coverage. Of course, that comes with a price tag for taxpayers. So the question becomes, how can we make the system less costly? Ideas include using technology to make the system more efficient. Things like electronic medical records could reduce paperwork and cut costs. Putting more information in people's hands would help them compare prices and performance for health care, like they do for everything from new cars to groceries, so they might use their money more efficiently. Paying doctors and hospitals for the quality of care they deliver instead of the amount of care they provide could help make sure people get the right care at the right time. And helping people exercise, eat right, and take better care of themselves to avoid getting sick should also help. 70% of health costs today are for preventable chronic diseases. The government is looking at all of these options, but so far there's no clear winner or winners. If you have an idea, contact your member of Congress. So now you know. Until next time, stay smart and stay healthy. Yeah.